How is that even possible? What is that magic? How? The first time I experienced AR was when I tried the Microsoft HoloLens and my mind was simply blown away by the idea of how does this even work. When I started to read about this, my knowledge about AR was narrower than the HoloLens's field of view, however, it proved itself to be a fun and challenging educational journey. Maybe you won't be able to make your own AR SDK right away or maybe that is not your final purpose and you prefer to wait for the SDK gods to release more magic, but knowledge is still power. Having at least a slight idea about how things work gives you a good hunch on what is possible to be launched in the near future and what not. Easier debugging process and explaining how existing frameworks work and understand their limitations. So let's start. This is what I managed to reverse engineer on how one of the most common augmented reality gimmicks work. Image targets. With the knowledge we'll get from this video, we're going to give it a spin in the next video, hopefully, using OpenCV, one of the most well-known computer vision libraries. The task we want to do is, by knowing how our image looks, to find it inside the video feed, and once we know it's there, to find out what are the 3D transformation we need to do in order to translate our image in the 3D space of the video feed. So what we will do is 1. Take all the corners or contrast points in our images. 2. Compare them with each other. And 3. Check based on those matches how is our tracker placed in 3D space. Preprocessing there are lots of devices, laptops, smartphones with different camera resolutions and so on. So the first step would be to pre-process our video feed in, in more simple to use units. To work with simpler information we will give up on color, remove the noise by blurring our image feed and size it to a constant resolution. Why give up the color though? Because we won't need it for now. We will use only the contrast points of our images so we will only care about the intensity of every pixel. What we need now is a fast, real-time way to detect contrast points. What we need now is a fast, real-time way to detect contrast points. What we need now is fast. Fast. Features from Accelerated Segment Test. Here's how it works. Select a pixel with an intensity i. 2. Select a threshold value t. 3. Consider a circle of some pixels around it. And 4. If there are a number of n contiguous pixels in the circle, brighter than i plus t or darker than i minus t, then we know that is a corner. There are of course other things to do to fasten this algorithm, but let's keep it simple and clear for now. Great, now we know where they are, but how do we match them? Don't worry, there are some great ways to do that and I will be brief about it. Brief. Binary robust independent elementary features. In order to store and match our feature points, we will use what is called a feature descriptor. A feature descriptor should be a light and as unique as possible way of storing a corner. Brief is a way to binary save our feature points. We take custom pairs of pixels from a selected patch and we store one if the intensity of the first is greater than the intensity of the second and zero otherwise. This is done for 128, 256 or 512 pairs and store them so we have binary arrays of this size. It also has the property that Hamming distance works great on detecting how similar two points are. There are two classic ways to do the matching afterwards. You can use brute force or nearest neighbors methods. Fast plus brief equals orb. Making them work together is so common that a better method appeared. Orb, oriented fast and rotated brief. It came as a response for the fact that most popular alternatives, Sift and Surf, were patented for commercial use. Simplistically speaking, it is just a fusion of those two methods, but they actually came up with other improvements, especially on the scale on and rotation invariancy part. It actually works so great that the whole SLAM system appeared right after, and I'm talking about SLAM Orb and the improved SLAM Orb 2. With this kind of systems, mixed reality experiences such as what ARKit and ARCore offer might be created. However, we will shoot towards much easier and yet popular methods, image targets. But now we have all those matches and many of them are bad. I guess those algorithms aren't that great, right? Ransack. 
However good they work on paper, there is still a problem, they don't. There are still many outliers when doing even our brute force matching. What can we do if about a half are good matches but half are outliers? Well, it's a matter of trial and error. Ransack, random sample consensus. It sounds intricated, but here's how it works. Until finding the best matches, we will take 2, 3 or 5 random matches, assume they are correct and see how the other matches fit. And the, if we have at least a threshold of, let's say, 15-25 overriding points, we got it. It sounds simplistic, yet is a powerful method that also runs blazingly fast. Great, now that we have a decently working matching algorithm and we kinda know where our image should be, let's try to find out what position and rotation does our image have in the video. This is basically done through some matrix mathematics and is the last piece of our puzzle. Find homography. We will need this on each iteration of Ransack as well as for our final transformation, the transformation that we also give to the 3D model we have. Planar homography is the transformation we need between two planes. It's used in perspective correction, panorama stitching and in our case camera pose estimation. There is a talk here about transformation matrices and solving systems of equations. However, for keeping it clear we'll assume you'll read this over Google or that I will make a video for this in the future. What's important now is to have the overview over the process. So, we have our image target and then, frame by frame of the video, we pre-process, detect feature points, get the descriptors, mesh them using Hamming distance and brute force or nearest neighbors, get the best matches by using Ransack and planar homography for correct overlaying, and that's it, we have augmented reality. Thank you for watching and as you can see on my channel I'm still experimenting with mediums of expressing better the ideas. If you have any question, advice or future video ideas, please leave a comment and subscribe if you want to keep up with the future posts. See you on the next one.